video is going to be a little preview of our creek tours that we have here at the seaport. So if you watched the video before, you already have your bingo board made and you can play bingo along with this video. And as you hear certain words or phrases, you can check them off your board and hopefully get bingo. Hi, my name's Charles and I'll be your safety tour guide for the day. And I'm gonna teach you all about how to stay safe on the Platakong too. So you'll either be sailing up and down the Tuckernan Creek or all the way over to LBI. So up above me, you can see we have PFDs or personal flotation devices, which in the case of an emergency, you'll be asked to uh, t uh, put on and take on, take on with you. <laughs> and if you're a child under the age of 12, you're, you have to wear these under Coast Guard law. You'll see a hand, sanitize, hand sanitization station right here and a trash can in the back. We also have a head over here for you guys to use as well, which is a portable bathroom on the boat. Um, in the case of a fire emergency, we ask that you follow the instructions of the captain and the crew to move to the security of the vessel. And there's a fire extinguisher over to the front of the boat and two in the back over here. And in the case of a man overboard, we'll maneuver safe safely to carefully retrieve the passenger. And we may ask for assistance from any body crew members to help complete the rescue. And in the case of us um, sinking, please follow the instructions of the captain and the crew to move uh, to move to the secure area. And also make sure to have these PFDs on and fastened. Thank you, and remember to wear a mask and maintain social distancing measures, and have a fun time on the Pat Kong too. Hi everyone, Carly the lead tour guide here, and today we're going to be talking about Native Americans. So who were the first people to live on this land? Well, I'm glad you asked. The Lenni Lenape were the original people of New Jersey. Not only did they live in New Jersey, they also lived in Delaware, New York, and Pennsylvania. They spoke something called Algonquin, and there were several different dialects of Algonquin. Here in Tuckerton, they would have spoke Southern Unami dialect. Unami means people of the water. The Native Americans used something called projectile points when they were out hunting. These are projectile points. Did you know that the reason why they're called projectile points and not arrowheads is because it could have also been a spearhead or a dart. You can find these all around Tuckerton and New Jersey. Technically, you're not supposed to keep them. You're supposed to leave them where you found them. Did you know that you could tell where a projectile point is from and its age based on the design and shape of it? Now, we can only tell if it was a thousand years ago or 500 years ago, not specifically from a certain year or a certain location, uh, but it can, uh, the design of it can tell us a little bit about it. What do you know about the Lenny Lenape? Hi, my name is Angie, and this is my first summer as a tour guide for the Tuckerton Seaport. This is a clam knife. Maybe you've seen one in a restaurant or something like it, or maybe you even have one at home. They're used to separate the shell of a clam or an oyster and then separate the meat so that you can eat it. In this area, oysters and clams were harvested by the Baymen of Tuckerton. The Baymen would go out every single day on their Jersey Garvey boats to harvest the clams and oysters. They would use them to sell or to feed their families. Not only are oysters and clams important for food, but they are also important for our environment. They are natural filters for the water of the bay. One oyster can filter out 30 gallons of water a day. So, when you see a clam knife, remember, the blacksmiths crafted it, the baymen went out into the bay to harvest the clams and oysters, and the oysters and clams are filters, natural filters, for the water of the bay. Hi, I'm Taylor. I'm one of the tour guides at the Tucker Seaport. And on our creek tours, we like to talk about our charcoal baskets. This one is a replica here. They're normally two or three feet long. And with them, they're used to have a charcoal, especially during the Industrial Revolution. And they're used in one of the over 30 forges in the area to help produce iron products based on the bog iron ore from the Tucker. Hi, I'm Bailey. Uh, this is my first summer at the Tuckerton Seaport, and today I'm going to talk to you a little about uh, a little bit about decoys. So, this is a duck decoy. Um, there are two types of styles used in this area. There is Barnegat Bay and Delaware River style. Decoys are primarily made out of cedar wood, as it is both buoyant and rot resistant. Uh, the decoys are made um, hollow so that they're easier to float with a piece of lead uh, typically stuck on the bottom to keep it upright. Uh, upright. A fun way that
that my grandfather proves that his are hollow is that he takes a shotgun shell and puts one of the pellets from it into it so when you shake it, it makes a noise. Um, when hunting, the decoys are placed in the water, such as an area like this, and then the ducks come in for a closer look and it tricks the ducks and then the hunters can go hunt the decoys, or the ducks. Hi, I'm Charlie, and this is my first summer as a tour guide at the Tuckerton Seaport. On your tour, you'll be heading through the marsh. This marsh is part of the Barnegat Bay Estuary System and is situated along brackish tidal waters. The marsh provides many ecosystem services to humans, including protection from storm surges and floods, as well as filtration of water to remove pollutants and excess nutrients. The marsh also provides a stable, safe habitat for shorebirds, fish, macroinvertebrates, mollusks, and crustaceans, supplying local clam, crab, and oyster industries. These marshes are home to many species of grasses and reeds, both native and non-native. The most recognizable non-native species is Phragmites australis, the introduced form of the common reed, which was brought here from Europe in the 19th century. The important native species of grass are from the genus Spartina, including salt hay and cord grass. I look forward to meeting you on the creek and exploring the marsh with you.